Hey guys, it's Elena. So a couple of months ago, I created this watercolor moon in a different video in Procreate with my watercolor brushes. So now I've added some flowers to it with my pressed flowers brushes as I had promised to do in the previous video. So I'm just going to show you how I've added these flowers and hopefully inspire you to do something similar. So let's get started. So here is the moon that I had started out by creating um, a couple months ago. So now I will be using my build a flower brush folder that comes with the pressed flowers brush set. And I'm using the pressed flowers warm and I'll also be using the cold um, color palette. So both of these come with the pressed flowers brushes. And so here's my layers for the watercolor moon and I'm just adding a new layer above everything else. And I will use this to start adding some flowers. So back to the build a flower brush set. I am just kind of looking for what brush I will be using. So I decided to go with the sweet pea to begin with and I'm choosing orange as my secondary color and burgundy as my primary color. And just making a little half circle, I'm adding a couple of blossoms here. So now I'm adding a new layer and I'm just trying to add as many layers as I can so that we don't have these flowers overlapping each other. So now I'm choosing the brush called Poppy number three and I'm going to make a small circle with that in order to make this blossom and I wanted to add a few more on the other side as well. So I'm thinking that the main focal point will be on the right but I will have some flowers on the left as well. So I wanted to do a poppy in an orange color, so I went back to that orange I had chosen as my secondary color and just adding some orange poppies as well. So now I've gone to my hydrangea brush and choosing a darkish purple color. This is a stamp brush, so I'm just going to tilt the pen in the way that I want the, the flower to be tilted and then tap. And so I wanted to kind of have it coming out from the moon on the side of the moon here. And I wanted to do a blue one as well. So I'm going to my cold color palette, choosing a dark blue and I've changed the size a bit as well. And tilting the pen again, I'm just tapping that onto onto the previous hydrangea. So it kind of felt like I needed some here at the top as well. So I did a little one in purple on top of that as well. So now I've gone to my Lilac 2 stamp and I really like how this one looks in orange, so I've chosen an orange color and I'm just again tilting my pen the way I want the flower tilted and tapping that on there. And I'm going to lilac number one and I'm going to do that in a dark purple color. I kind of wanted to have that be sitting along the edge of the moon. So now I've gone to Lily number two, choosing a pinkish red color. I wanted to add that along the edge of the moon as well. So I'm kind of thinking we have a big bouquet over on the right side and the part on the left is just sort of complementary to that. So now I've gone with Poppy number five, choosing a dark blue and I will add that stamp as well. Sorry, I meant pansy actually. That was pansy number five and now this is pansy number 12 on the other side. So now going with primrose number four in a brighter blue color and I just added a new layer. I'm not being very scientific with the layers but my main goal with the layers is just not to overlap any of the flowers so that I can still draw stems on them and so on. 
So I've gone to my Veronica flower, which is kind of a dark bluish purple in real life. And just kind of adding a few of these tiny ones here. I've gone to my violet stamp and I've still got the purple selected and I'm just adding that one over on the left side. So I thought it might be good with some petals as well. So I chose petal number one in orange and tilting the pen how I want the petal coming out. I'm just adding the petal a few times. So now adding another new layer, I'm going to rename that just so I know what I'm doing. I've named it stems and I'm putting that below all the flowers. And in that layer, I'm going to draw some stems. So I chose a dark green color and in the same build a flower folder, I'm scrolling up to the leaves and stems area and getting the stem number one brush. And with this, I'm just going to draw the stems coming out from the plants. And I'm going to try not to have this be a huge focus. So these are just there as an accent. And I'm going to try to just not go overboard with the stems or the leaves, but just have the focus be on the flowers. So at this point, I decided to add some of these sepal bits, which are the, they are the connector bit between the stem and the flower. So I'm adding a new layer for that and renaming it. And so in that new layer, I'm letting it be on top of the flower layer so that these green bits will be showing up on top of the flowers instead of below them. And finally, I'm adding a new layer for the leaves. And so choosing leaf number one in the same green color, I'm just going to make some very small leaves. I don't really want the leaves to be the main focus because I have gone overboard with leaves before and then regretted it. So I'm just adding some tiny little leaves here and there just as an accent. So that is the final result, and I just really like this idea of pressed flowers together with a watercolor painting as kind of a dreamy collage. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you were able to find something useful or inspirational in this. And I just really appreciate you being here, and I hope to see you next time.